Just a friendly reminder before the video begins, you will hear two stories in this video and both have new updates. Now on to the first story. My wife got a promotion and wanted to relocate for her job, far from everyone I knew. I said no. My wife, 35F, and I, 38M, have been married for 12 years, dated for three before that. We have three kids, 10M, 7F, and 5F. We both work full-time in separate fields. She does some chemistry thing that I don't understand and I am a manager at a computer repair store my friend runs, and also a short story writer when it's slow. She is definitely the breadwinner bill payer between the two of us, but I bring in the fun money for our family and would be completely listless if I didn't at least work part-time. We also fully own our home because of her job. Also, my parents watch the kids for us during the week when we are working. It's been this way since our son was born, and they've been doing it less since they are all in school. But it's free childcare, they refuse to accept money unless it's reimbursing for buying food. Okay, now that all of that backstory is set, here's where the problem begins. A couple of months ago my wife started Pepper into conversations about a possible promotion coming up that would get her out of the lab and into a more manage the lab team position, with less dangerous hours for more pay. Ever since the first time she mentioned it I've been hyping her up and telling her she's a shoe in for the promotion, especially since she's been working there since her master's internship and now she has a PhD. Last night she told me she was getting word today if she got it. After she left for work this morning I called my boss up and told him I couldn't come in today, and then told my parents the kids were saying with me. We spent the day cleaning the house, drawing congratulations cards, and making a congratulations banner. We also made a couple cards that say sorry and we love you for if she didn't get it. I was working on making her favorite dinner, lobster rolls with lobster bisque, because she's a fancy lady, when she got home earlier than normal. Everyone was surprised, because no one is usually home at this time and yet here everyone was. She got tears in her eyes seeing everything we were still working on, got down and hugged our two youngest, and said she got the promotion. Cheering all around. And that's when she dropped the bomb, saying we need to get a realtor in estate 3 away from us so we can relocate within the next 2 months. I was stunned, and just said no, we aren't moving for this promotion. In all of her talks she never mentioned that the promotion wasn't for the same location she's been at. All of our family is here, her parents and mine, all of our friends are here, my job is here. She insisted that she's mentioned relocating before but I swear she never did. That set of a completely new argument about never listening to her and only hearing what I want to hear, and how this will make it so I can stay home with the kids and not even need a fun money job. During this I noticed she was typing on her phone, and when I asked why she was multitasking an argument she said she was texting my parents to get the kids so they don't have to see this. When my parents got here they congratulated her on the promotion and asked how long until we move. She told my parents the promotion included relocation. I'm typing this on the couch in the basement, because I can't face her right now. My parents knowing means she probably did say we would need to move if she got it. I don't want to move, I like my job, and our house. I like being near my parents. I know this would practically set us for life but I don't want to. I know I'm being selfish, and I know I must not be listening when she talks, but I still don't think she should accept the promotion. I still think no. Verdict, not the asshole. Update this has only been up for a few hours, but I wanted to get this in as soon as I could. It's been a little less than a month since I had sent this in so a lot has happened. I will front load with information people asked about. Formatting is screwy because it's Tumblr. Also sorry if it sounds fake, I wish it was. Info I've been tested for ad as a kid but did not get diagnosed, though I guess that would be something that can change as I age. I probably should get tested for ADHD considering she's told me her exact job many times and it refuses to stick in my brain. It's something to do with the environmental testing? Like, soil, water, ect? It's definitely not incredibly dangerous, but it involves chemicals so there's always some danger. Info There were many conversations in general about her possible promotion, mostly about upgrading cars and electronics. It was never really anything detailed beyond that. Info I don't actually know why my parents never mentioned it. I should probably ask them at some point. Info Our kids do have friends in school, though in these few weeks they never really talked about anything with me. It was like everyone was walking on eggshells where I was concerned. My son did say we needed a school with a good soccer team though, so he had some opinions after the argument. Info When my parents got the kids she stormed up to our room and I went and hid in the basement. I was definitely being a coward, but I also wanted us both to calm down. I did feel silly asking Tumblr about this, but I've been here since 2010. I was falling back on a previous safe haven. That next conversation did not happen. That next morning she was acting like I was perfectly fine with everything and we weren't arguing in the first place. It was weird, but after the argument in front of our kids and venting here, I had decided that I would support my wife. If my parents knew we were moving, I was clearly in the wrong. Update This is of course when things started breaking down. Buckle up, this is going to get stupid. And if you think this sounds like a bad story, you try living it. Within days of the announcement we had a realtor looking at houses for us near what will be her new office. 
She was planning on being the one to do a final walkthrough after we picked a house via photo so she could multitasking and get acclimated at the new job location. It was her suggestion, and I did not want to rock the boat any further. Conversations between us were only about logistics at this point. How would we handle moving? When was my last day? Where were the kids getting transferred to? Ect. It was very stilted and any time I would try to just talk normally she would ignore me. The next time I had work one of her co-workers came in with her kid's busted laptop. The screen took some kind of sports ball to the face basically. As I was filling out the intake form she asked me how our kids were handling the transfer. When I asked her what she meant she clarified that she was talking about the transfer request my wife put in, to the office she said the promotion transferred her to. I told her that my wife didn't put in a transfer request, but instead was given a promotion with a transfer. She then told me my wife's had that promotion since January and recently put in a transfer request that was approved. The promotion that included a hefty pay raise. When she left I checked our bank account on my phone and saw that the same amount she's always been paid was still what she was getting. I believe the coworker must have been mistaken. But when I went home I spoke to my wife about it. She told me that the coworker was just jealous she had been passed over for the promotion and wanted to add to the drama in our house. That seemed to break the ice a bit and I was able to apologize to her for the misunderstanding and the argument. She told me she accepted the apology and that she assumed it was coming because of how helpful and attentive I had been. According to her I was, paying more attention than normal and she appreciated it. She must have spoken with the coworker about this at some point because when she came to pick up the laptop a few days later she refused to speak with me past hello and here's the bill and was glaring the entire time. After that conversation things seemed to settle. I wasn't happy about the relocation, but I didn't want our family to break apart all because I wasn't paying as much attention as I should. This new attitude was the final nail. We had started organizing things, throwing away and donating things we didn't remember even having, act, to prepare for the move. While I was going through a closet she normally hid the kids' Christmas presents and I found a few old laptops. She claimed that she hides everyone's presents in that closet, and that I found her birthday present for me. Just some things to tinker with while we settle. Not totally weird, but it was a little. She probably knows about as much about my work as I do about hers. I also found a few books that belonged to her mother. I figured that I could start to mend that bridge, her parents never liked me, and bring them the books. I did not tell my wife about this, but considering the level of dust on them I'm sure she forgot they were there. Her parents live a few hours away from us. Not even slightly as close as my parents, but they would still be states away after the move. I drove the entire way, no meeting halfway or anything. It was an awkward meeting, but her mom did appreciate me bringing the books to them. Apparently she thought she had lost them. We did some stilted small talk over a late lunch, and I asked how they felt about my wife's promotion and move. They seemed a little confused, and stuff was slowly unraveled. According to her mother she mentioned the promotion in January, when she got it, she had mentioned to her dad that we were saving the extra money just in case because of a business venture my boss and I were planning. According to her, we were going to try opening a location in the city we were moving to and I would be leading it. Her parents said they knew I'd had some failed investments and plans in the past, so they were honestly not hopeful this would go well, but they were glad she was able to transfer with her promotion to the other office. Guys, I had no idea what they were talking about. Investments or plans? I'd done the same job since college and I've never invested money a day in my life. I said as much and then also told them I was going home to talk to wife. I don't really know how they reacted, I was basically in tunnel vision. Probably shouldn't have been driving. So much ran through my head during that drive home, and I was ready to confront her about everything. I guess her parents called while I was driving back and it tripped her up enough that she just told me everything. She was cheating on me, had been for years. Once she got the promotion in January she set up a second bank account and had them split the check between the two. Her boyfriend in the city we were moving to had access to the new account. He already owned a house but he used some of the money to fix it up a bit and was just waiting for us to come, I guess to sweep her off her poor feet after my business venture failed. She didn't tell me about relocating on purpose, she's been poisoning her parents' thoughts of me for years, and she's been lying to my parents and children. She also told the co-worker that started this thread that I never listened to her and the misunderstanding was just another instance. She told me she never thought so many things would come undone at once. She's still planning on moving. Me and the kids aren't. Now on to the next story. Story 2 close friend asked for my wedding planning help and became a horrible bridezilla. I've known Adam, 29M, since the 6th grade and I met his now wife Sarah, 25F, when they started dating a few years ago. Sarah and I clicked immediately and became very good friends, she's sweet and has an infectious energy. Adam can be kind of a dick but he's one of those old friends that you make excuses for, and he can be very kind at times, of course, I care about both of them very much. Last year Adam proposed to Sarah and they decided on a wedding in a friend of a friend's backyard. This type of wedding can be cheaper but it requires a lot of organization, because every single element has to be rented and set up, and for people who have never planned an event like this, they were in over their heads almost immediately. 
My fiancé and I moved to a new city about 8 hours away shortly after their engagement and I now work full-time as a wedding planner and a day of coordinator. At the risk of sounding boastful, and strictly for context, I love my job and I am very good at it. I am highly requested, well-reviewed, well-paid, and I run about 10 weddings a month. So when Sarah called me in tears a couple of months ago because she was so overwhelmed and had no idea how her wedding day would run, of course I told her not to worry about it and that I would coordinate for her. Why wouldn't I? I mean she would do the same for me, right? Thursday morning, after driving 8 hours, I call and text Sarah asking when and where I can help. She answers hours later saying to not bother showing up until just before the bachelor slash bachelorette party. When I got there she and two of her bridesmaids were taking bong hits and chatting. So her maid of honor, MOH, and I prepared wedding desserts in the kitchen while Sarah tended to her friends, one of which was on an horrific acid trip. Friday was set up day and the mother of the bride, MOB, literally brought a mobile, home full of decor, with no plan of where anything would go. I have never seen so much decor for a wedding, and that is saying something. At the rehearsal dinner Sarah ended up screaming at Adam in front of their families and bridal party about a perceived slight and I had to play counselor for them. On the wedding day everyone got there early to set up. It was another long, stressful day of delegating and organizing but I got it done. It looked gorgeous. One of the prettiest weddings I've ever done. I ran the ceremony, sprinted up hills to control the iPod, set up cocktail hour, moved all the seats from ceremony to reception, hooked up all of the lights, poured the champagne for toasts, sent tables one at a time to be served by the food truck, everything. Honestly, I felt like Superman. I did an awesome job. Three couples asked for my rates because they wanted me to run their weddings and complete strangers gave me such sweet compliments about my professionalism. I was, and am, so proud of how it turned out and grateful for, most of, the bridal party who worked so hard and took my directions without a second thought. I am used to bridezillas and I always let their attitudes roll off my back. Weddings are stressful and I don't like to judge people based on a stressful event. But I wasn't expecting to be treated so shitty by Sarah, who had always been so sweet to me. She stormed up to me several times during the reception to bark orders at me or demanding to know when things were happening, sometimes as I was literally instructing someone to do that very thing. She would roll her eyes at me and was very condescending. She held up her own wedding ceremony because she was convinced I was stupid enough to give the bartender the wrong cups and needed to check herself. She never said, thank you, until I was leaving at the end of the night. I didn't feel like a friend, I felt like an employee, and not a respected one at that. Other people noticed how she treated me. The best man is one of my oldest friends and he wanted to march up to Sarah and demand she apologized to me during the reception but I asked him not to because I didn't want to start drama at her wedding. Apparently she and Adam have been getting nastier to everyone over the past 6 months. Eventually I just shut down and went into work mode. I didn't eat for about 15 hours. I have blisters on most of my toes and ran about 13 miles around that event and she treated me like a lazy piece of crap. She was probably the worst bride I've worked with, and again, that's saying something. Adam, shockingly, was actually very appreciative most of the day until I was leaving. The last thing he said to me was, I love you so much, we couldn't have done this without you, it was perfect. Except you fucked up that, inconsequential thing that no one noticed, ha ha. We drove home yesterday and honestly, I feel like I lost two of my best friends, fiancé, who was by my side the whole time and the most helpful person during setup gotta love him so thing much, is livid. He is so pissed that I did such a huge favor for them and they treated me like that. He doesn't want them invited to our wedding and I see his point but I don't want to make a decision until the whole thing calms down a bit. The Mo is equally pissed and texted me the next day to say she also felt taken for granted by Sarah. Sarah and Adam are on their honeymoon for the week right now and I kind of don't want to talk to them yet. So I come to you? Good Redditors? Should I say anything? Wait until they contact me? Wait until best man rips them a new a-hole? Wait for an apology and then reassess their invitation to my wedding? More info, just to add that the Mo was amazing. I've known her for a little while but she, my fiancé and I really bonded and I hope to have her as a guest at my wedding, also, I've been having a problem thinking about if this friendship is worth saving or not. In fact, that's exactly what I'm, wrestling with right now. So, thank you all for the comments, I'll wait till I cool down, set a date and then go from there if she doesn't contact me. Thanks again. Update 1, Hi, everyone. Thanks for all of the advice on my previous post. I love me an update so here's mine. So Sarah and Adam's wedding happened in early June. I decided that if I hadn't heard anything by October 1st I would email Sarah and confront her about her behavior. I wanted to give it a little time so that everyone could cool down, plus I've been absolutely swamped with wedding season at work, so I thought 4 months would give her a very gracious amount of time to think things over. Well lots of stuff has happened, none of which were apologies. I never received a thank you note, a call, a text, anything. Sarah's maid of honor actually confronted her about her behavior towards her and I and others in August. Sarah said, Oh really? I thought I said, thank you, I didn't realize I was acting badly. 
So she was informed that she was out of line but took no steps to actually make things right. The only time Sarah tried to contact me since the wedding was in August when, unfortunately, my fiancé's sister passed away. It was sudden and shitty and we're heartbroken that she won't be at our own wedding. Sarah texted me about a week after she passed saying, I just realized I haven't talked to you since the wedding, I'm sorry about, fiancé's, sister. If you need to vent let me know. Not sure why she texted me and not fiancé, but whatever, I said, thanks and didn't respond further because I wanted to focus on fiancé and his family. Adam's best man called me last week, Adam and Sarah are divorcing. Apparently things started going downhill immediately following the wedding, more fighting, not sleeping in the same bed, etc. Then Sarah lost her job. Then they decided to get a puppy. Then a few weeks ago Sarah confronted Adam basically saying, I feel like you proposed under pressure and then when everyone told you it was a mistake you doubled down even though it seems clear you don't want to be married to me. And Adam basically agreed. And honestly, everyone had tried to tell both of them that this was a bad idea. We really tried. But they were having none of it. They just thought that relationship milestones, moving in together, engagement, marriage, puppies, would be good band-aids for their problems. So Sarah moved back to her home state to live with her parents. Their families are livid. Their bridal parties and wedding guests are upset too. Obviously none of the wedding gifts were returned. It sucks and I'm sad for them because breakups and divorces aren't fun. But I'm sure it'll be better for both of them in the long run. I had a short text conversation with Adam and he seems as okay as can be expected. Seems like my question of whether they should be invited to my and fiancé's wedding has worked itself out. Thanks again for all of the advice, even though I didn't get to actually use any of it.